Hello guys and welcome to the laboratory of Nano Oplex and Plasmonics. Today we will show you a little about our most recent research. One of the aims of our work is to boost the microprocessor performance by replacing some electronics inside the microprocessor by nanophotonics. However, it's not so easy to do, since a photon occupies a certain volume in space, which is roughly equal to the wavelength of this photon. In the telecommunication spectral range, this number is equal to about 1.5 micrometers, which is much greater than the size of the transistor. To overcome this limitation, one can use metal dielectric plasmonic nanostructures and they will give a possibility to confine light to a space much smaller than the light wavelength. Unfortunately, there is one fundamental problem. The metal introduces huge losses and the optical signal propagating along the nanoscale plasmonic waveguide is strongly attenuated due to absorption in the metal. To overcome this limitation, SPP propagation losses should be compensated by optical gain in the adjacent medium, which is pumped either optically or electrically. This is the problem we have been working on for the past several years. Our worst enemy is huge heat generation produced by first, SPP absorption of the metal, and second, by optical or electrical pumping, which is required to create population inversion and optical gain in the adjacent medium. These processes can drastically increase the device temperature and eventually they can destroy the device. We have simulated heat generation in the active plasmonic nanostructure and have found that the heating power density at the waveguide surface is as high as 5 kW per square centimeter. This value is comparable with the power generated by sun near its surface. If we put this active plasmonic nanostructure on a chip, which is 1 cm in size, placed in air, the temperature of the chip is increased by more than 100 kelvins. At the same time, we should note that the temperature change within the chip is only about 1 kelvin and consequently, we need only to remove the heat from the chip surface. The problem is similar to that of the CPUs and GPUs. So, we need to use a good heat sink, which should be attached to the chip with a solder to improve the heat conductivity. This approach gives the possibility to decrease the temperature rise to only about 2 kelvins. Contrary to 100 kelvin temperature rise in air, this result is very optimistic and demonstrates that we can win over the temperature rise. Read our recent paper in ACS Photonics and don't forget about proper cooling when you design an active nanophotonic system.